So the, the types of issues we would deal with are sort of low-level environmental issues, waste, dog fouling, fly tipping, littering, um, and also nuisance aspects, so smoke from fires, noisy neighbours, antisocial behaviour, like a real mishmash of, of stuff. Um, and the way we would deal with that, um, and we didn't, I, I didn't certainly realise at the time, it was very um, policy and procedure driven. We had like a route we would follow, even um, to the point where we would think we were quite liberal in our thinking and, and it, we didn't think it was very procedural it, on doing the review and stuff. It, it, it clearly is. Um, and we would always try to engage with people first and get them to help themselves kind of things. However, if they didn't do that, then we, we, we relied on enforcement. And that could be through warning letters and then notices and then fixed penalties. And if people didn't pay fixed penalties, then sometimes they would invariably end up in court and things like that. And with some of the housing type issues, um, that would lead to eviction and all that sorts of things as well. Mm -hmm. Times I didn't really think, if I'm honest, John, with that. I, I think we always went um, with a toolbox and we would try and engage with people. Uh, however, for whatever reason, if, if people didn't uh, engage, then we would only have the enforcement tool left in that box, if you know what I mean. Um, I think where we would try and help people and that, that broke down, um, it would only make their some chaotic lives worse, I would think. Mm. Um, which isn't very good is it really yeah. um, I think to an extent you do but you kind of have the caveat to fall back on that you've tried everything you can to get engagement from that, from that, that person and therefore it's, it's almost their fault it's ended up like that because you've kind of tried everything if you know what I mean it's, it would never be my fault if somebody didn't engage with me that's somebody else's choice kind of thing so yeah you would you would think of it but it was it got downplayed immensely i would think hmm. uh, I, I should imagine there was not a great focus on what my actions how or how my actions would impact on somebody else's life if you know what i mean true hmm. so the, the the project was a review um looking at the, the process of, of how we worked and stuff like that. And initially, we um, looked at all our demand and where that came in from and, and what types of demand they were. Uh, I think we picked five. And then we looked at the process involved with dealing with each one of those demands uh, and mapped out from the start to the finish, um, roughly what those steps were and how long they, they took. Uh, and then turned the whole thing on its head and said, well, from an outside-in perspective, what does this mean? And, and at what point along that, that process um, matters to that person ringing up or making the demand? And how could we cut out a lot of ways to get quickly to what they wanted, if you know what I mean? Um, but then we, we looked at other aspects of the um, triangle of help and people's needs and sort of um, generally what somebody's presenting demand isn't always necessarily what their actual problem is. Mm. One is um, the presenting demand is not always the actual demand, isn't it? Mm. That, that's, that, that's the um, biggest thing that we need to focus on. And the other one is um, how good it feels when you, you do something to, to help somebody um, that, that might not be a big thing or a costly thing or a, a, a massive amount of time but for somebody else it it means so much kind of thing mm. yeah that's right yeah we, i thought we was very effective and stuff like that and 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 actually we we weren't the, the other thing is as well you you realize how much waste some some things are like so um the way we work now is much more customer focused and we bear in mind uh, with every demand we, we kind of plot somebody on the triangle of need and our help is never to push anybody further up that triangle of need that the, the old principle is to listen uh, be non-judgmental 
help and understand what's going on with somebody. Yeah, so the, diff- the, the main difference would be um, when we're trying to work with somebody now and stuff like that, we listen to what they're telling us, but try and then pick out and focus on the, the most important thing to that person to, to act at that. Uh, and an example of how that would be before, if I came to see you about waste, I would listen to you about what you had to say and maybe help you address some of those other issues. But my main focus was there to concentrate on the waste, Um, whereas now it's not. So um, like um, another example is I went to visit a lady with an ASB problem or she was allegedly causing ASB. And when I spoke to her, it was clear that it wasn't necessarily the ASB that she was bothered about. It was more the fact that she wanted to move and through sitting down with her and listen to her, I could then work with her on what mattered to her most, which is the key thing. And for her, that was to get a move. And with a few ground rules and stuff like that, I eventually got that moved and she was super happy with that. And mm. that had a massive impact for the better on her life and her children's life. Mm. So that would be the difference. So you listen and, and focus on what matters to that individual, not necessarily the reason why you might be there or something. Mm. I really, really like doing this this way of working. It sits very well with me. Um, it, it's it's amazing, in fact, how you can help some people by not really doing a great deal. Um, and it's it's a, it's a nice feeling. It's nice to go home with sort of fulfilment, if you know what I mean. You, mm. I can go home knowing I've done my best to try and help the people I'm working with, not for. Um, and it's it's good. The thing we have done here as well to free up time is we've implemented a duty officer system um, where we're trying to get members of the public when they ring up with demand to speak to an officer that has got experience in dealing with those issues Mm -hmm. and giving them words of advice on recommendations how to resolve, like the low-level issues and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So although we are doing that, our, our case officers are doing that for a full day, we're actually reducing the amount of demand that gets made up into cases. Okay. So the theory behind of it is if you can reduce the amount of demand that's made up into cases, that frees the case officer's time up altogether to spend more time with those people with complex needs that need that extra extra time, if you know what I mean. Right, okay. Um, and, and that's the thing about it. You have to have that moment. You have to have that light bulb moment where it all clicks and then you appreciate how, how good it can be kind of thing. Mm. And then it, you almost are trying to <laughs> recreate that all the time because it is, it is, it is nice when it does happen. Mm. Um, nothing but positives, really, to be honest. Mm. We've not been on any special training courses or anything like that. Mm. Everybody had that skill set built in. Mm. It's just about um, like a little tweak mm. to to your skill set, if you know what I mean.